touch on Stasha and Nate for a little bit, and and and, and Stasha and is still having her control her controlling ways, right? She still has her controlling ways. But I, I'll start with um, uh, let's start with uh, August love story. Your thoughts on Stasha and Nate, and is Stasha still being controlling? You want me to go for it? Yeah, go ahead. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, Stasha still being controlling. The biggest problem they gonna have is is making this house a home for Nate. That is going to be the biggest issue they're going to have just because the house is her house. <laughs> and giving him rules before they even move in, it's like a telltale sign that, man, it might not be a good situation for you in this house for a little while. You know, um, I don't know what they need to do to make him feel comfortable. And I think that's something he really needs to think about and really communicate with her. Hey, this would make me feel comfortable. This would be good for me and the house um taking him to a store to look at knobs and door door uh knobs and pulls and everything like that yeah that's f him giving a contribution to it but for me that's one of the things i wouldn't care to look at you know um but just really understanding like hey this is our home this is you know where we live this is what we're doing and stuff like that i just I think she's going to struggle with it because she's going to understand that it's her house. Now, the big, the other issue is I think she's not, I think he's overthinking children and she's underthinking it. Right. Ain't that what I said on our, yeah. Um, <laughs> because it's like, she's like, I want to have kids and have fun. Like, yeah, you gotta have fun with your children, but it's going to be a point where you're like, some of the stuff that you were doing you can't do and nate finally said like what he needed to say about his mom about her mindset being so young and why he was with his dad and his mom wasn't a part of his life and i think that's something for her to look at as well just because to reassure him on that that front just because it's like he's looking at the situation as she's looking at a child as a Piece, like a piece of jewelry you know something you wear and when you get tired of it you can just put it up or something like that that's the way he's looking at the situation with her and having children she has to assure him that that's not what it's going to be because she even was like uh his he when he brought up his mom was 23 she was like but i'm 37 obviously he's not thinking about the age that you are he's thinking about the fact that you don't have children and you having a child, bringing a child in with him, he don't want you to think, oh, it's just going to be peaches and roses and rainbows and stuff like that. So their conversation about kids make me wonder how close they have both been to children, like to someone that has kids, because it absolutely changes mm -hmm. like everything about your dynamic. Like we, just like a small example for us with two small kids, we've had to start incorporating like a weekly Lily can sleep in the bed with us because she feels left out because her brother's in the bassinet in our room, but she's the only person that goes to sleep in her own room. And something that's that small, you never think about prior to having kids, but it's like, it's literally something that changes about your dynamic that you don't expect for it to happen. I think that I get his standpoint of like, you know, he's like, I'm all into age three, but he's like, we're not taking vacations. And I'm like, are we not taking vacations? Or are we not taking long vacations? Because I can get with you on the, I don't want somebody else to watch my baby for seven days. Again, things that have happened to us recently. Lily went away for what 10 days, yeah. 12 days yeah. to my mom's house. And when she came back, she was a totally different child. Mm -hmm. And it's like having somebody else watch your child, you just don't know what you're coming back to. Um, mm -hmm. but I think that she's like, I can be a cool mom. I'm like, yeah, you can be the cool mom, however everything's not going to go the way that you want it to unless you're already talking about hiring in people to fill in all the stuff that you don't want to do so you can continue living the life that you've been living. And if that's what it is, 
say that to him up front mm-hmm. because that's not where his mindset is. He's looking at it like I'm going to be like my dad. I'm there every day. Mm-hmm. And so it's a, it's a different vantage point. And I really do believe that they need to be around people that have kids and talk about the kids and how they've changed their relationship Mm -hmm. for lack of better words. Kids change your whole life. Okay. I'm just now texting my oldest son who trying to give me some directive and he 26. If he don't sit down somewhere, kids, kids. Okay. They got it all mixed up. Okay. That's what I do know. But um, y'all know how I feel about people moving in to somebody else's space. I don't think that's a good idea. I never have. I never will. That is her home that she built um, from the ground. Was it from the ground up or she just bought it and she from the ground up? I'm just not a fan of that because of the simple fact that, like he said, he's smart enough to understand that this is your house. Though we can make all, you can make all the accommodations and you could let me pick all the, the knobs on the cabinets and the, you know, we could change the doorknobs or whatever. And you can let me put grass in the, in the back because that's an issue. Concrete versus grass. You can do all of those things as a compromise. But innately in his mind, as well as hers, it's still their house. He's never, I don't think he's ever going to feel like it's my house too, unless his name is on that deed. It is not his house. It is her house. They could be married. Okay, that's great. But they did have a post nut, and that post nut probably included the house. Like all of these things, I think that he's smart enough to understand that I ain't no, I don't want to play no, I don't want to play this game with you, Stasha. You do want to be in control of things, and you can be in control of things because this is your house. I mean, we're talking about dishes in the sink. I don't want no dishes in the sink. Girl, wait till you had them babies. <laughs> I don't want to uh, make sure you get a roll when you see the roll empty. Sometimes that's not what you're doing. You're running in and you're going to use the bathroom and you're running out and you forget, especially if the toilet tissue is not right next to you. Listen, I'm talking from experience. I'm always yelling, Kate said I forgot. Even though I got two or three rolls that I normally, you know, you clean the bathroom, you add more rolls. But there's times that you forget. So some of the things I think that she asked for can be a little unreasonable and are meant for a single woman. You can have all the the idiosyncrasies. You can have all the rules and expectations when you live alone. When you start thinking about somebody else and incorporating someone else into your life, you have to consider them. And I don't know if Stasha is in that space. Though I like her, I don't know if she's in that space where she can be like, I can really compromise. Like, I don't know, Mona said it in the comments. They should go ahead and just rent that house out and get something that they both have. Like, and 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 I'm a firm believer. Now I told y'all I'm not getting married again, but just so happens, you know, an almost semi-perfect guy walks around because you know he's not gonna be perfect. Let's just say he shows up. He's got a house, I got a house. His house could be bigger and better than mine. I'm not moving in there. Okay, we can live separately or we're gonna go ahead and find us somewhere that we can have together collectively because I'm not doing it. You're not going to put me out. You're not going to get mad at me and tell me how this is your house. You're not going to do none of that. Um, so yeah, that's how I feel. And everything y'all said about the kids, plus whatever Glenn's about to say times 18, because these kids, when I respond back to this boy, <laughs> these kids, okay, you are never, ever not a parent. Okay. He talking about till day three, I'm going to be all in till day three, sir. I bet you called your daddy last week. I bet you called him. Like, sir, knock it off. You are a parent for the rest of your God-given life. The end. Like, I don't know. You know, Stasha with all the white in the house. She must not never been around a baby, right? Babies drool. Babies spit up. Babies poop. And it runs out of their onesie. Little boys shoot rainbows. Right? <laughs> and she, so that, that all that white... May just turn a little bit yellow every once in a blue moon, right? It is bound to happen. I don't care how perfect you are or how uh, comfortable you're going to be. Something's going to take place when you add children into the mix in your relationship. Kids spill things. You can put all the sippy cup things on top. You spill things as a human being, right? Um, Y'all have parties and functions. It kind of reflects the perfect life, right, that she wants to present. 
Uh, even when even went to the point where she had the pillows. Remember, she, like earlier, she had her bedroom all staged and set, look like nobody lives in it. Well, some Saturday mornings, guess what? Nate's gonna want to lay in a bed later than you want to. Some Saturday morning, Nate ain't gonna want to make the bed and put the fifty million pillows on the bed like you want to, right? There's gonna be some day you and Nate might oversleep and y'all hop up and y'all have to go somewhere together. It's not gonna be like that. So guess what? The perfect little house. I, I understand you the OCD and understand being clean. I understand all that. Trust me. But in life, in marriage, there's some things that change within the home. And I think she doesn't adjust well with change, uh, especially with the uh, the um, controlling aspect. Nate is 100 percent right. I don't care what cabinet I pick, whatever. Guess what? When you might get mad, you may say this is my house and I don't want to have to deal with that. I want to feel like it's a home. So guess what we may do? We may sell this house. We may get another house. We may rent this house out. But guess what? And Nate may not ever feel comfortable in that home. I know me and Jack did it uh, when she we was married and uh, we got married. She had a townhouse. It was great. I, she never had that issue. Of, this was her home or my home. I felt comfortable. I real felt real good until we started having kids. Like, you know what? We don't have enough space. So let's go get one together. Let's 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 go get one. Let's get one together. So it may be even that aspect, even if she may not be that way, uh, which which I think Stasha is that way you know, a little bit is her way. Because even when he talked about, yo, let's get a little bit of grass back here. She looked at him like, no, I said, I'm going to get a patio. Bro, we're just talking about a little bit of grass. Right. You know what I'm saying? She looked at him like, nah, I don't think that's the case. When he liked talking about cabinets, he was like, mm, nah, I don't like that neither. Then why you ask my opinion? And when I give you my opinion, you can be like, nah, you don't like that. She's look, she she's controlling with the house. I think she's controlling in the relationship, not in a bad way. She's trying, and I don't think she's intentionally trying to be um that controlling. It's just that she likes to be do things her way. And this is her the house to her is the achievement, something that she accomplished. The house to her is something that she was able to do on her own and she was able to build. So it's an accomplishment thing to her. Um, and so it's like, you know what? I really take pride in this house because I designed it. So you see the hexagon black tiles on the floor. I really like these. I really like that's the way I really like that. So, again, it is an accomplishment to her. And anything that messes that her accomplishment up or puts a hole in that, Nate's in trouble. Lord forbid he accidentally put a hole in the wall. Right. Lord forbid a kid accidentally break a window. Right. Lord forbid. So, so he, he actually have a friend over. They come scuff the floor up with their tennis shoes. Right. Or they forget to take their shoes off. Uh, I mean, it's going to be something when you have a home and you add different people into it, something's bound to happen in a home. You don't intentionally do it. It just sometimes, you know, you pull a drawer out too fast and the drawer breaks or you pull, you know, you do something of that nature. How does she handle uh, if something gets messed up in the home? And I think that's going to be her, her OCD and her her patience is going to be tried. Her help having Nate to, you know, like, you know being forgiving for Nate is going to be tried as well. So she has to do those things. Again, her her expectations and what she expects, I think, are too lofty and that she may need to come down. Not I don't ask to take lower her standards, but be a realist and a realist is everything's not going to be 100 percent. Or just do, I think somebody said hire a maid, hire a maid and hire a nanny. You make sure somebody's on staff 24 seven. Right. And make sure all that even then something's going to bound to happen. Something's going to transpire. So don't get so caught up in the house that it's um, messes with your marriage. Because the house can be gone one day. You want the marriage to last forever. So then she needs to be caught up in Nate. So her and Nate can, you know what? Let's try to build. Because what if you, what's to say? I think Nate said something. What if you have a special needs child, right? <laughs> what happens if you have somebody who has special needs? Uh, what happens if y'all have, you think you having one child at a time, but somehow you end up having twins. Now you got double duty. Some things transpire. What, you know, I think Noy was like that. I want three kids, but can you handle three kids at one time? What if you have triplets? And so, so at this point, you you banking on just having one kid at a time. It may be you may have multiple kids, and you you might you might want to you know just prepare for things. And and on Nate's, oh, I want to be my child's life from zero to three. They don't remember. You. They remember you a little bit, but you should want to be in their life the whole. What's gonna happen after three? That's the only thing I'm thinking. Like, what's gonna happen after three? Like, are you gonna go back to work? Or did anybody else realize like Nate is Nate trying to say he won't be a stay home dad? Was he trying to say that he was going to be a stay-at-home dad? That's what he was like, I'm going to be all in until at least the age of three. And that's when they got to the conversation about, like, no date nights, no vacations. But it kind of did sound like he wanted to, like, be at home. Yeah. And I don't mean, like, after work. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, like, at the house. There ain't nothing wrong with that. Like, Sasha, Sasha got the money. You, 
get it together. I'd be here with the baby. Yeah. <laughs> I, I mean, I have nothing wrong with that. I just getting try to get clarity because I'm trying to pick that up. Like, was he trying to be a stay home dad? But then again, you know, people says, I know if Jack was here, she'd tell you, when we had kids, when our kids were younger, we had vacations. We took the kids. We took the, I mean, it, we took the kids. And we took the kids or we let somebody, that's what grandparents are for. Especially when they zero to three or they're not school age, go hang out with grandparents for a week. Oh, spring break. <laughs> Y'all go that way. Oh, it's summertime. You know what? Go spend a couple couple weeks with your grandparents. That's what you have a support system for. If you trust your support system. You know what I'm saying? If you trust those around them to, here's a standard with our kids. This is what we do. This is what we don't do. Go take that vacation. Go take that weekend because you're going to need it in marriage. If you don't need it, if you don't get it, it's going to be a problem. You need those breaks from your kids. And I love my kids. One turn 18 a day. But guess what? When it's time to take a break, we take a break. <laughs> when it's time to say, you know what? Y'all stay here. Oh, yeah. Grandma's coming next week to stay with y'all. <laughs> Deuces. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> See y'all in a little bit. You need those. So guess what? They, you can, And even with little kids, you can still take breaks. You put, you pack the bag up. You pack all the milk up. You pack all the formula up. Here y'all go. We'll be back on Sunday afternoon. So. I'm